Hi, this is Dave. Welcome back to my channel, Follow the Figures. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to put together a video uh, by request of uh, subscriber Maurice, who had asked if I could focus a little more on the target and ability ratings. And this is um, these are factors that I use during uh, with the Matrix system, and not to follow the figures. Follow the figures is more focused on the uh, uh, the buyers or the Trackmaster figures or Brisnet figures, depending on what PPs you're using. And the Matrix system dives a little deeper into the running lines of the race, the calls, the times over here, and so forth. So there's still numerical, uh, quantitative measurements and quantitative factors that I look for, but um, it's a little more in depth. And the, the 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 two factors, two of the factors that I look for are the target ratings of each horse or each runner and the ability ratings. And what I want to do is I want to spend time on this video uh, focusing on this one horse, Prince James, from race six on uh, July 20th at Saratoga. Okay, so this is July 20th at Saratoga, and we're going to go over the target and ability ratings and how to figure them out. Um, first of all, if you notice, I have the six furlong times, with the exception of the first one. I have the six furlong times highlighted here. When I figure out a target rating or a, a, an ability rating, I use the six furlong time as an indicator. Okay? So that's where I start off at. It doesn't matter what the distance of the race is, today's race, or the race that's being run here. I always use the six furlong time as a marker. And then I take it from there. Now, 108, I use the time 108 as my standard, which would be a 100 rating, okay? So if there's a horse that has a one, if there's a race with a 108, six furlong, and at the, at, at the, at the finish or at the distance of today's race, it's in first, that horse would get a 100 for a target rating. But for every second off of 108, for example, 111 would be three seconds off. 109, all right, ignore the fifths right now. 109 would be one second off of 108. For every one second off, I subtract five. That's a, that's a, that's a difference of five lengths slower than a 100. And then for every one-fifth of a second after that, it's one length. All right, but I'm going to change the word length to points, okay, since since the ratings are an actual point system. With 100, you could, you could have higher than 100. You could have somebody who ran a 107. That would be one. That would be five lengths faster than the standard. A, one, uh, a 107 would actually be a 105 rating, okay, but I always base things off of a 108. So if I look at this race here, first thing... I would have I would have picked up when I did my initial scan is the fact that it's coming off of a two turn race. Now two turn races ideally are a little bit slower, so you're going to get uh, a lot of times you'll get a slower time here. Uh, you might say, well, what about down here? The the, 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 the one twelve and one is faster, but this was a somewhat of a fast race for two turns. But what I do is I still want to make up for the fact that this is a two-turn race and we're looking at a one-turn race today. So let me show you what I do. First thing I did was I took out the last two calls of this race, okay? And what I did was, the reason I did that is because these have nothing to do with today's distance. Today's race is being run at six furlongs. This here is a, this is the six furlong call right here. The third call of any two-turn race is going to be the six furlong call. So that's what I'm worried about right there. That eight, eight lengths. So if I go f 111 is three ticks off of, three seconds off of a 108. So we already have 15 plus another four, one length for every fifth is a 19. And then I have eight lengths off of the leader. I have to add another eight to the 19, which gives me a 27. All right, that would be a 73. However, we got to hold up for a second. What I do with a two-turn race, and the today's a one-turn, I always add five. 
Okay, I had five. So the 73 would be a, become a 78. This horse's target rating would be a 78. Okay, so if you need to rewind and go back over what I just did, go for it. Um, if you have questions, you can throw them in the comments and I'll answer them the best I can. But now I want to go over the ability rating. The ability rating, what I want to do is, and this takes a little bit of mental math, quickness with mental math, but as you get used to this this system here, 108, um, you could, you'll could you be able to look at a time right away. A 111 is an 85, and then we have another two seconds off at the six furlong mark there, which would be um, 15, 60, that would be an 83. Okay, if I go to another six furlong race, there's an 85 right there. Because that would be three seconds off. That's an 85. And then the three quarters, I, I go and I adjust that. I change that to a one. Okay, anything over a half. So the three quarters would be a one. A half, I revert back to um, the, the, the number before that. Okay, so if this was two and a half, I would make it a two. It wouldn't be uh, whatever. But what I want to do is I want to look at all these past races that the past performances offer me here. And I want to find his best rating using the same exact system we use to find the target rating. The target rating is a recency rating. Like, it's 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 a it's one of the factors you can use to, that indicate recent form. How well is this horse done last time out? Or for whatever reason, if you had to toss the last race and you have a race before that that's, that was somewhat recent you would use that race, okay? So, for example, if this was a turf race, and knowing that today was on dirt, if this last race was a turf race, I would I would have tossed that race out, okay? And, or if it had a troubled trip over here, if it said uh, broke in the air or, or bumped, you know, bumped on the turn or whatever it may be, I would toss that race out because it was a troubled trip. It would probably give me a false indication on this horse is, uh, you know, recent form. So let's go down here and say, okay, 111 is an 85, 84, 83, 82. That would be an 82 rating for this race. Now, I don't usually uh, mark that. I don't, I don't usually write down all the ratings for all these races, but for the sake of this video, I will do that. That's an 82. Now I move up here. There's another 111. Okay, that would, we already know that's 15. There's five lengths for every second off of 108. 15. Now, this is a six and a half furlong race. I want to go to the. I want to use the six furlong call, which is right here. And that would be a 15, 16, 17, 18. That would be an 82, also. Now, again, you say, well, what about the half? If it's a half or a quarter, I will take it back to three. If it was three quarters, I would move it up to four lengths out. Of, out. Now let's go here. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now this is where you also have to know your tracks. Okay. Aqueduct is a one-turn mile. So I would just keep it to say 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. At the, you might as well say he was in first because he's only a head out. 19, this would be an 81. But again, once you get good at the mental math, you can do these. do, do this quick. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through this, and I'm going to look at the one we didn't do. This is a 108, so there's a 100 right there. We got two-fifths off and another two out, two out, so that would be four ticks. Two and two more. That would be four-fifths, so 100 minus four, that would be a 96. So this horse's ability rating, because that's the best you're going to get. Just by looking at these. Okay. This one here is a 10, 11, and 6. The 17, that would be an 83 right there. So the best we're going to get is a 96. So this horse's ability rating would be a 96. So we'd have a 78, 96 target ability. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. And I'm going to go back. And I'm going to look at all the other horses I'm gonna do their target and I'm gonna do their ability ratings and then I'm gonna come back on and we'll take a look we'll identify our target horse and we'll identify our, our ability horse
Okay, I'm back. So what I want to do is, before I even look, we look at the other horses, I just want to let you know that this is not a standalone method. I mean, it could be. You could use it as a spot play where, you know what, I don't have a lot of time. I'm just going to go through a sample of races, and I'm going to figure out the target and figure out the ability, ratings, all the horses, and maybe uh, look for value and put, put a couple dollars to win on the target horse for each race if the value is there. Or maybe put the two in front and key them over top or wheel them over top of some other horses in an exacta. There's different ways you can do it, but this here is not a standalone method where that's all you, that's all you do and boom, you move on. But like I said, it could be, okay? Looking at the best trainer could be a method, right? That could be a standalone method. It's a spot play. So let's look at the rest of these here. If you look at number two, I, I come up on an 84.97. Now, I'm not going to do the math for all of them for the sake of the video length, but I got an 84 here by 15. That's three ticks off of a 108, 111, plus one more, 15, 16. He was out at the six furlong by half a length, so I, I take that half out of there, and that would be a, a 16. 100 minus 16 would be an 84. And then I got a 97 for ability off of this race down here. This one's an 88.95. This one's an 88.93. The five is an 87.86. Now, here's a scenario where <coughs> I refer to this horse as an exceeder. This horse exceeded his ability. Okay. This horse ran at 87, which is his highest rating in its last however many races it's offered on the PPs. So what I do is I take that 87 and I actually make it an 86. Okay. I bring it down to his ability level. Okay. So that, that would be an 86, 86. Uh, here's the six, 89.91. And the 7 was 83.87. So if I look here, my highest target rating without exceeding is actually this horse right here. The 6 horse. Now he does have to happen to be the 2 to 1 favorite, morning line. But he's my target horse. And I would just identify that on my grid. But I don't have the grid open. But the 6 is my target horse. And now I look at the abilities. And I know I had a 97 up here. There's a 96 there. But the 97 is the best. And again, he also happens to be uh, close to the morning line favorite. But still, he's an ability horse. And then I would move on. But if I were using just these, this method as a standalone... I would identify, okay, the six horse is my target horse. We know that. 89. Do I have any 88s? I think I have an 88, right? The four horse. I would... It's my second target. T2. And then we have our 97. We have a 96 here. That's our second ability. And then maybe find one more. What's our who's our third target? 88. There's another 88. 8895. This is all I think that's tied for yeah. So he's my second target also. And then maybe put together a um an exacta. If the if the odds are low, we put together put together an exacta. Maybe go with my target and ability. Or my two targets. So let's go six. And who's got the best value out of these two? Four and the three. Maybe 3-6 over 2. One, 2 Because he's my second ability. 1-2-3-6. So maybe an exact that I would play would be 3-6. Uh, over 1-2-3-6. Or is it, was it four? Yeah, four, six, not three, six. Four, six. Over 
three of them. Oh yeah. Okay, so two targets, one ability. Sorry about this. Over two, three, four, six. Okay, and then I would just maybe roll with that. I mean, I don't use this just these two factors as my standalones, but if I were, maybe I would do that. Now, if I go and I look at the results, which let me see if I can. Okay, I pull up these results, and it was a six five four three finish. Okay, so we did not hit that exactly there because we didn't have the six five. Five was that three to one we were talking about. Um, no, actually, this was a three to one we were talking about. But as you can see, the target horse did win that race. Now it didn't pay much, but the target horse was a winner at 540. So if you went and took that target horse and keyed him over top of, you know, the rest for an exacta, for two dollars you would have got 2260. But just this, this just so happens to have, be a race that the target horse won the race. Now, some questions I get from some people that email me, they say, well, does the target horse always be, is the target horse always your favorite? Is this a, is this an indicator of chalk? Not really, because what happens is, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to doctor up a page here real quick, because I'm about to finish. Suppose this was a turf race, and we tossed it. But yet, everybody else, not everybody else, but a lot of the other, the public, and let's say this horse ran really well in this race, and we go back one, and the horse did not run very well. Let's say the horse did not run well here, here, and here, and his target ratings were very low. You still might get a lot of people on this horse because of that last race, where we may find our target horse somewhere else, who's a better price, and he ends up beating his favorite, okay? Or the other way around. You might have a horse that ran terrible last time out. And there might be a reason behind it. Whether it be in the comments section over here. Or maybe, it would, again, maybe it was the surface. But yet, um, people look at that and they don't. They ignore the fact, that, okay, that it was a turf race. They don't, because not everybody handicaps the same. Some people might say, well, I'm going to use this race. And uh, I'm going to look at these last two races, and this horse was lost by whatever lengths and lost by double-digit lengths both times. What they do a lot of times will go, I don't like this horse. Boom. Done. And they move on. Well, if you went back another race that was close to today's distance, maybe the, this last time out was a turf race. Maybe this last race out here was a mile and an eighth, where we know at a mile and an eighth we have to throw out the last couple calls because it's a six furlong race. But not everybody does that. Some people will look at that finish and go, oh, that's a terrible finish. Well, how about, how was he doing at the six furlong call? That's what determines that. And all of a sudden, you, you get a target rating off of that call, and he ends up finishing high, and he goes off at 10 to 1 and wins the race. So, no, the target horse doesn't always indicate the favorite, Okay. It will a lot of times, but that's why there's other factors you look at. Okay, hopefully that cleared things up. Uh, I appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I will have more videos coming up. And please request any videos like Maurice did. Please make your requests, and I will do the best I can to grant those requests. Thank you.